Hi, hello, my name is Gomer Joseph. I hope you've all been having a great day so far. Welcome back to another True Crime Tuesdays video. If you are new, I welcome you. Before I discuss today's case, I'd like to mention my Christian Suspense book series, which is Never As It Seems. The first book in the series is available on Amazon, and you can read it on any device on the Kindle app for free. Not only that, but I do have another book series, which is the Juliet Clark book series, which is about a Haitian-American teen sleuth who happens to be a successful true crime YouTuber. The first book in the series is titled Murder at Heart, and if you're interested, the links will be in the description box below. Today, I'll be discussing the tragic deaths of the Benoit family. This case is a tough one. Now, if you don't know, Chris Benoit was a wrestler in the WWE. And back in the day, I used to be this huge WWE fan. Like, it used to be so interesting. Like, it used to be so cool to me. But now, WWE seems pretty dry. I can really go on and on about this, but I'm just going to try to only focus on the case. I remember when this tragedy took place it, and it was such a shock. Unfortunately, when details came out about it, this shocked me and countless other people. Overall, it's a tragedy which affected so many lives. Now, I encourage you all to do your own research with this case and not to just look at my video for all of the information. Here we go. So to begin, I'm going to start talking about Chris Benoit's life. So Chris Benoit was born on May 21st, 1967 in Montreal, Canada to parents Michael and Margaret Benoit. I do know that he had a sister named um, Laurie. Now, Chris, one of Chris's earlier exposures to wrestling was when his father took him to see this specific wrestling match where he saw the wrestler Dynamite Kid, you know, wrestle and seeing Dynamite Kid's talent, that's when Chris realized that he wanted to be a wrestler when he grew up. He wanted to grow up to be a professional wrestler and I do know that Chris Benoit also looked up to another wrestler whose name was Bret Hart. Now, Chris was described as someone who was quiet, reserved, serious, a hard worker, and disciplined, and an overall amazing performer. Chris began wrestling in 1985 and was pretty much taking part in different wrestling promotions, even all the way in Japan, where he actually became best friends with another wrestler named Eddie Guerrero. Now with Eddie Guerrero, it seems like he will have an unintentional vital part to this story. So later on in life, Chris Benoit joined WCW, which was this rival to WWE. He joined WCW in 1992 to 1993, then went to ECW for like a year, but went back to WCW. W. Now, as Chris was, you know, climbing up the charts, I guess, in wrestling, he was married to a woman named Martina, who would give birth to his children, David and Megan, but unfortunately, their marriage didn't last, and they divorced in 1997. So during his second stint in WCW, that is where he met another worker who was pretty much like a manager quote-unquote manager like she it's hard to explain like she had like this gimmick in the wcw so she was a wcw employee had a gimmick of a manager to her husband kevin sullivan so this is where he met nancy sullivan so nancy was actually born as nancy i hope i'm saying this right Nancy Toffolini. She was born in May 17, 1964 in Boston, Massachusetts to parents Paul and Maureen Toffolini, and I do know that she had a sister named Sandra. Nancy was described as beautiful, artistic, independent, caring, helpful, loyal, strong, talented. Um, Right after high school, she married somebody named Jim Doss in 1982. Now, her husband Jim took her to wrestling matches, and that is where 
she was hired to be a model since somebody, you know, she caught the eye of somebody. And, you know, after this little modeling stint, that is where she later became part of these wrestling shows known as, you know, her gimmick, The Fallen Angel, and working with wrestler Kevin Solomon. So, in 1985, she divorced him and married Kevin, and the two eventually worked for WCW. Like I mentioned before, Chris and Nancy met at WCW. So her husband Kevin basically created this storyline where Chris basically stole Nancy away from him. But fiction would soon turn into real life because that storyline became reality. Um, Nancy and Kevin's relationship soon grew toxic and Chris was a man that Nancy relied on and they eventually fell for each other. After Nancy divorced Kevin, Chris and Nancy were engaged in 1997, but they would literally have like an engagement for like three years. They gave birth, um, not they, but Nancy gave birth to their son Daniel in February 25th, 2000, and after giving birth to Daniel, that is when Chris and Nancy got married. So that same year, both, um, well, both of them left WCW, but Chris, he entered into the WWE. And before I discuss all of that, let me go ahead and discuss Daniel Benoit. Daniel was pretty much described as this boy who looked up to his older brother, David. Daniel was playful, he was joyful, and he was just an adored kid. So on November 13th, 2005, Eddie Guerrero died suddenly of a heart attack, and I believe, like, Eddie, he wasn't on drugs at that time, but from what I remember, um, Eddie had trouble with drugs in the past, and I guess because of that history with drugs, like, it just suddenly caught up with him, sadly, and he died of this heart attack, and with him being Chris's best friend, like, Chris took it extremely hard like to the point where he'd constantly be in tears like almost daily over Eddie's passing and just put him into this amazing amazing tremendous state of depression sadly it seemed like after Eddie's death Chris just was spiraling downhill Nancy noticed how her husband was act acting and she would see Chris talk about or not see, but she would hear Chris talk about kids who were kidnapped by their wrestling fathers. Um, he would discuss crazy fans, and there are times where he took different directions to places that he had been going for years, and Chris, he didn't want to be seen. He was acting paranoid. He would also get into these arguments with Nancy, and Nancy wouldn't understand why they would even get into these fights in the first place. So in the past, specifically 2003, Nancy actually did file for divorce and even ordered a restraining order against Chris claiming that he was being cruel to her, but both the divorce and the restraining order were dropped by Nancy and I guess that they worked things out for a bit. So back to Chris's dire downhill spiral after Eddie's death. Not only was all this stuff going on, but he was becoming quiet. He was becoming distant. So he was gifted this journal where he would write to Eddie as if, you know, Eddie was in the room with him. On June 24th, 2007, Chris calls Chavo Guerrero, who is Eddie's nephew and also a wrestler for the WWE. Chris tells Chavo that he can't make it to a certain pay-per-view show on time because of food poisoning. Not only that, but Chris ended with the call telling Chavo, I love you. But this call made Chavo feel uneasy and he felt like something was off, but he just really couldn't put his finger on it. So early the next morning around 5 a.m., Chavo gets a text from Chris telling him where the dogs in the house are, like specifically, and this is confused Chavo, but what confused him even more was that he also got a text from Nancy's phone saying the same exact text that Chris sent. 
later on, Johnny Ace, who was this employee of the WWE, I feel like he was like a, a promoter or something. I, I don't know. But I just know that he worked for the WWE. And he talks with Chavo about the text, which is also the same thing that Chris texted Chavo earlier that, do it, that, earlier that day. And Johnny's annoyed that Chavo didn't show him these texts earlier. But, you know, Chris, he basically was a no-show to this pay-per-view event causing Vince McMahon, who was the chairman of WWE, in case you don't know, he sent a wellness check to Chris's house, which was located in Fayette County, Georgia. After making this wellness call, police arrived to the Benoit estate and spoke with a neighbor. She pointed out that it had been like three to four days since she had seen the family. So police asked her to take Chris's dogs while they checked the house. So when she came back outside of the house, she screamed at the police stating that Daniel was dead. So police, their guard is, their guard is up and they look into the house and smelled dead bodies. The first body that they discovered in the house was Daniel. The second body was Nancy and she was found on the floor. Eventually, they found Chris who was in his gym hanging. Later on, it was determined that he drugged both Daniel and Nancy before strangling them, then hung himself. So obviously making this a murder suicide. So David, Chris's oldest son, and I can imagine his sister Megan were devastated by the news. Like not only that, but there's all this mixed emotion. Like you have this father who you looked up to, who you adored, who you loved, and you find out that not only is he dead, but he killed his wife and your baby brother, like, I literally cannot come to imagine what was going on in their mind. As the rest of the Benoit extended family heard about this news, clearly they were devastated too, and clearly they had mixed emotions as well. So, Vince, he pretty much gathers, you know, this type of, like, meeting with all the WWE workers, and he announces the deaths of Chris Nancy and Daniel not giving any details since not everyone got the full details and once Vince McMahon shared all this information the, w the WWE workers were shocked confused and devastated especially you know since Eddie passed almost two full years prior it's like it was just a lot to take in from what David had said in recent interviews, he actually ho holds no hatred towards his father at all. Now, not getting all the facts, the WWE paid a tribute to Chris and his family for Monday Night Raw. But after they did get the full information, it was pretty much like... The WWE basically erased Chris Benoit from the history of the entire company. To this day, there is no Hall of Fame consideration for Chris Benoit because of what he did. There's literally like no mention of his name anymore. Like there is no nothing for Chris Benoit at all. So with this complicated case there comes theories so this one theory is that you know maybe it was drugs maybe chris was abusing drugs because um he supposedly was taking um drugs that were not detected by wwe drug testing and they believe that because of this that might have influenced the deaths and especially you know with his um, depression for Eddie Guerrero's death. There's also this other theory about him doing all this because his brain was damaged. And it was damaged because 
of wrestling. And I understand that people always say wrestling is fake and everything. But I understand that the wrestling match, it's staged. But the pain that these wrestlers go through is absolutely real. Like his brain matched one, sup supposedly, allegedly, like his brain matched one of an Alzheimer's patient. So what do you think? Do you think that Chris killed himself and his family because he was this monster? Or do you think that he truly wasn't in the right state of mind? Please feel free to leave your thoughts in the comment section. And I truly feel so much sorrow for the loved ones of the Benoit family. Like these deaths were just so complicated. And sadly what Chris did affected the way that so many people used to see him. And whatever was going through his mind, it robbed him of a well-respected legacy. It robbed his wife of living out her years and it robbed their son of a future. And it is so crazy to think that this year, Daniel would be like 21 by now. Like, <sighs> since Chris's son David holds no bitterness against his father, after everything he did, I guess one lesson that we should take out of this, that we should learn from this case, is forgiveness. I thank you all for taking the time in your day to watch this video. If you did like this video, please feel free to hit the like button. Once again, if you have any thoughts on this case, please leave your thoughts in the comments section. If you'd like to see more videos from me, please feel free to subscribe and click the bell to be notified about the next video. If there's a certain true crime case that you'd like me to cover, go ahead and let me know. I will see y'all for the next true crime Tuesdays and I will talk to y'all later.